Okay, here are perfect problem seven solutions for Math 251. Um, in this problem, we have to find the derivative of x raised up to some power, and that power appears to be x raised up to the x power. Kind of a mess. Unfortunately, there's some hints in here. First one says we're going to be using logarithmic differentiation. What I'm getting at there is set up an equation where y is equal to the thing you want to take the derivative of, f of x in this case. And then if we can just, I'll write parenthetically, if we could just find y prime, we'd be done, right? This is y, this function right here. I want the derivative, so find y prime. The problem is I can't just take the derivative of both sides of the equation because I don't know what the derivative of the right-hand side is. That's what I'm being asked to figure out. Um, but there is a way to do it, and we're going to have to do a bunch of algebra, kind of manipulate this equation, so that we can rewrite things in a form for which we already know the derivatives. And so that's kind of what I'm getting at in hint two here. The first thing you want to do is, well, if y equals this mess, the natural log of y is equal to the natural log of that mess. Why does that help? Because we have this log rule that says anytime you're taking the natural log of something raised up to a power, you can take that power and bring it down in front. So this is applying that log rule. Take that power, bring it down in front of my log. So the thing in parentheses here goes in front. And all I got left is the natural log of x. So the good news, bad news is we still can't take the derivative of both sides of the equation because we have this x to the x thing going on here. Okay, well... The way, I mean, kind of as it says in hint two, the way we kind of got an exponent that we didn't want up in the exponent, out of the exponent, is uh, by taking the natural log of both sides. And we can do that trick again. Take the natural log of, maybe it's time to switch colors or it'll be hard to tell what's going where. Take the natural log of both sides. See the left hand side of my equation used to say natural log of y, so now it's the natural log of the natural log of y. And the right hand side was x to the x power times natural log x. I want to get this x out of the exponent. I can't move it right now because this entire thing is not being raised up to the x power. But what I can do is take advantage of another log rule. Um, and what that other log rule says, I guess that should have been in red. I don't know that the color really matters on the left-hand side because it's simple enough. But since I started color coding, I'm going to continue color coding. Um, what I have on the right-hand side is the natural log of something times something. You may remember that we have a log rule. It says anytime you're taking the log of something times something, that's equal to the log of the first something plus the log of the second something. So what I'm saying is instead of the natural log of this product, I can write it as the sum of these two natural logs. One of them is x to the x power, the other one is natural log x. I'm getting closer. I'm going to leave this side alone for now. But on this side, I have the natural log of x raised up to the x power. If I again apply that rule that says anytime you have an exponent, you can bring it down in front, what I get here is x times the natural log of x. Um, then over here, I'll just leave things alone. I got the natural log of the natural log of x. Something like that. What I've managed to do, I haven't done any calculus yet, right? This is all just complicated algebra, log rules, exponent rules, moving pieces around. But I've now managed to rewrite this original equation in a way that I can take the derivative of both sides. Let's see, the derivative, how should I write this? Let's write it like this. I want to take the derivative of the natural log of the natural log of y. Now that's going to be equal to the derivative of x times the natural log of x plus the natural log of the natural log of x. Um, left hand side, that's looking like a chain rule. Right hand side is the derivative of something plus something. The 
I have a rule that says anytime I'm taking the derivative of a sum, I can rewrite that as the sum of the derivatives. One, two, three. I guess I should recopy this here. Um, and I think I've managed to break things down into a step where I can take all these derivatives. Over here, the derivative of, it looks like I got chain rule. The outside function is this natural log right here. So the derivative of natural log of something is 1 over that something. In this case, 1 over the natural log of y. But then I'm not done. I still have to multiply that by the derivative of that something. What's the derivative of natural log of y? It's 1 over y times y prime. It's a chain rule inside a chain rule. My innermost function is just the letter y. My next layer is the natural log of that y. And my next layer is the natural log of all that stuff. Find those two chain rules, you get right here. What about over here? The derivative of x times natural log of x. Well, that looks like product rule. x times natural log of x. Derivative of x is just 1. Leave natural log of x alone. And then add to that, leave the x alone. And take the derivative of natural log of x. This derivative using the product rule gets me here. What about this derivative? Uh, this looks like chain rule again. In fact, this is very similar to this one. Um, the outside, most outside layer is natural log of x. So I'll write 1 over the thing playing the role of that x, which is natural log of x. Then I still have to multiply that by the derivative of natural log of x, this inside one now. And that derivative is 1 over x. So, if I multiply both sides of the equation by y times natural log of y, I get that y prime equals y times the natural log of y times the natural log of x plus, see, x times 1 over x. That's just 1. Uh, these x's cancel. And then here, 1 over natural log of x times 1 over x, I could write that as x natural log of x. Out of room, so I'll draw some messy arrow taking me way back up top. Um, I think if I clean this up a little bit, I'll have the right answer. Y prime equals, typically, whenever it's possible, you don't want to define your derivative of Y in terms of Y. So what I'm saying is instead of writing the letter Y here and the letter Y here, I'm going to replace it with X raised up to the X to the X power. So instead of y times natural log of y, I'm going to write x raised up to this power times the natural log of x raised up to this power. There's the y, there's the natural log of y, and then I got all this stuff. Natural log of x plus 1 plus 1 over um, times natural log of x plus 1 plus 1 over x times natural log of x. Um, so I get this entire thing is my derivative. This guy times this guy. And hopefully that matches up with what I got up here. Let's see, it says the answer is x raised up to the x to the x power. That's this guy. Times, oh, I guess it's not quite there yet. I should unsquare that. Um, if I want it to look like this, the only difference between what's written here and what's written here is in this one I'm taking the natural log of this weird looking thing. In this one I got x to the x power times natural log of x. Right? If you look at this part and this part. The difference is I applied that log rule again. The natural log of x raised up to that power, I can take that power and bring it down in front like I did over here. I can take this power and bring it down in front. I can say my derivative is x raised up to the x to the x power times the natural log, nope, times x raised up to the x power times the natural log of x times the natural log of x plus 1 plus 1 over x natural log of x. The answer I had before wasn't incorrect, just didn't look the same as what I said the solution was. So I do a little bit of algebra, I get the same algebra, and I get the same solution that I had before. I think it's finally time to end this problem.